Good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us tonight. They have killed, they have raped, and grievously injured innocent people. But when somebody behind a violent crime is sent to the state hospital, nobody, not even the victims, know when they're let out. Much of their history is hidden by privacy laws. But now one victim has made it his mission to push for change. This is a story you'll see only on two, and it is new at nine. Getting to the top of the Cocoa Crater Trail is quite an accomplishment. But for Nick Iwamoto, it brings nothing but bad memories. It was a random, you know, unprovoked attack. On February 1st, 2009, Nick was stabbed 18 times and was pushed off the top of the crater. He was in the hospital for a month. But I, I have one that I guess apparently nicked my jugular vein. But his emotional wounds are still raw. The man who attacked him, Benjamin Davis, was acquitted of attempted murder by reason of insanity and was sent to the Hawaii State Hospital. According to court records, in October 2016, the court granted Davis a conditional release and he was moved from the state hospital to a group home off hospital property. And two weeks ago, the court granted Davis permission to move from the group home to live at his parents' house, adding salt to Nick's wounds. I didn't know that my attacker had been released to live with his parents until you told me yesterday. And it just, this goes to show you the ineptitude of the state, that they will leave, you know, a victim of probably the most brutal attempted murder in this state's history completely out of the loop at every turn. Benjamin Davis is just one of a number of people who've been acquitted of crimes and sent to the state hospital, but are no longer there. Because of privacy laws, the public doesn't have an easy way to find out when someone's released. We asked state lawmakers if there's a chance of ever having a registry of people released from the state hospital, like there's one for sex offenders. We certainly would like the public to have the right to know. I feel it's, it's incumbent on us to know um, who's our neighbors. So on one hand, we have the people that are on the sex offense registry, and that's crystal clear. I can find out. I can just go to the internet. But on the other hand, a person that has a mental condition, they're protected by federal law. Not knowing about someone's violent past can have deadly consequences. The Al Alcaraz family, if only they had known. I didn't lose my life. He is just like my life. But she's gone. Some doctors argue that mentally ill patients can be treated and deserve a new lease on life. But for Nick, he can't come to grips with that, especially when he looks at what he's gone through, and he doesn't want anyone else to have to go through that. His reintegration into society has become more important than public safety. And that is unforgivable. The privacy laws not only apply to those being released, but also those who are still there. The only time the health department gives us an update on a patient is when he or she escapes and poses a danger to the public, like when confessed murderer Randall Saito escaped back in November. Threat